while driving my BMW, I've noticed that when I shift, it is a little jerky feeling. If I do it with any kind of speed whatsoever, if I just slowly let the clutch out and slowly apply the gas at the same time, like grandma style, I don't have a problem at all. So I checked out my differential and it seems stiff so this is the only thing I can think of that might be doing it and as you can tell you can see it's very oil saturated this is a 2000 it has about 180,000 miles on it and just with one hand let me show you it's kind of weird holding my phone under here It's, you can, uh, okay, I can't do it with one hand, but this thing moves a lot, and you can even see, you can even see cracks and stuff developing, and it's pretty mushy with just me squishing it. If I didn't have the phone, I could do it, but, so, I just went, I got this online, it was 20 bucks on eBay, and it took two days to ship. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to replace this. Uh, not very costly. So we're just going to do this cheap thing just to see if that fixes it. And so all I really have to do is I'm going to support the tranny. I'm also just going to do the fluid while I'm down here anyways. But I need to take off this bracket. So I'm going to support with this jack right here. And then take these bolts and the ones in here, just because there's bolts on the other side that it's just going to be a lot easier if I do it this way. And so I'm going to take this off and then I'll come back once I'm there. So I got the <clears throat> support off. Uh, you can even see it's a lot worse. I'll show you a picture when I get it off, but yeah, look at this. So, I'm really starting to think this is it. But, um, this is tough as hell. So, this is my strategy, my redneck strategy, because I do not have a impact. I have one, but I don't have air anymore. My air compressor broke. So, what I have to do is get my snap on open end just to rest there and then I have another this is these are 18s by the way I have another and what I have to do is I have to if, if it'll go right there so what I do is I hold this and then I have to position myself in a really awkward position let me get it I've already gotten two of them this way and this is the last one and then get your foot and shit okay yeah these stickers are tight Okay, and then I just keep moving this and doing it, so after I get this guy off, I'll see where we're at. Another thing you can do, as you can see I'm doing, I've pinned one wrench open end against the side of that little bracket, and then this one I have on my foot, so you can actually get good leverage, and uh, Loosen it. It's loosened actually very easy now. Or you can continue to do the other method with one hand. That worked too. Taking off the rubber piece came into a problem. It won't come off all the way. Apparently I have to take off the exhaust. So I've been soaking these bolts in PB Blaster just to get them loose. I did it for yesterday. I did them at night and then I did it this morning and now it's after work so I think I'm just gonna try them again I undid the back 
if you can see it from here, in the back of my exhaust, just two hinges, common sense, and I laid it on the box just for support, and also I laid my other jack. This is probably something you'd want to do before you do the other steps, just because if you don't have two jacks, then you won't be able to hold up the transmission and the exhaust at the same time. So I'm going to do this now and come back. So as you can see, they came off. I actually ended up using a breaker bar just to break them loose, but I want to say that PB Blaster helped a lot. So I still have the exhaust propped up on the, that box. I had that piece of wood that you see on top of it, and I removed it just to get it a little lower. And this jack's still right here. So this means I can just lower this jack and then control it, control the lowering down there, and then I'll get the jack out of here. And then it should actually be pretty easy after this. I'll be back. So I dragged the exhaust out. And sadly, you had to take off the entire exhaust so you can remove this shield. Because hopefully underneath here somewhere, I should be able to unbolt it. Sorry for that squeaking. My creeper's really old. So, there's two bolts. One right here, and one right here. And a little bit of dirt came out, so that might be an indicator that you want to make sure you're wearing safety glasses. Or keep your face away. So let's just try to take this off. So sad we had to do all that just to take this off. And we just have to take this off to get a little bit of slack because there's a shaft right about here that goes in. And you can't pull this shaft, you can't pull the drive line back far enough to expose the shaft to get the rubber mount out. So let's, let's keep trying to get this and see what we can find. There's a lot of crap falling on me. I'm going to try to get out of the way. So there are actually two more bolts right here and right over here to get the piece off. So now she's exposed. It looks like we just got to take this center piece off. And then this should give me enough play. It should drop down so I can pull that off and then I'll put it on the bench and we'll see what we're looking at. So here is the old one. This stuff is very squishy as you can see and you can see you know where it's easily compromised so I really hope this is the problem. If not this is definitely a contributing issue to it feeling a little jerky when I shift. I think it's, you know, because the rubber's flexing each gear. So this one, my new one, as you can tell, this is tough as crap. I, I'm sure it gives a little bit, but nothing close to this oil saturated. And uh, you guys might say, well, you need to make sure you have your saturation fixed before you do this because this is going to be the same this is going to be the same result as this one later down the road and yes i did that when i bought the car there was a big oil pan leak and that's all fixed and everything so shouldn't have this problem again um all right i'm gonna put this on and we'll see what happens just reverse order basically so i went ahead and tightened it to my drive shaft already i just tightened these three and then i need to put it up and when it's on that tighten the other three so the other thing that I the other thing I did was these rubber these rubber guys these guys are really flexy as well as you can see really really squishy I thought you know what the heck I'm already down here you might not have to do this but mine are oil saturated just like the other piece was so I got these off of eBay these are way tougher, and I, these are, um, I want to say they're, they're Malin, I think that's the company, 
if I'm pronouncing it right. So I believe that's a pretty reputable BMW company. And these were only 15, 15 or 16 bucks with free shipping. I got both of them. And they're pretty self-explanatory to install. I also obviously went ahead and got their gaskets as well. I got these on eBay. These were about 15 bucks free shipping. So also uh, this right here. This apparently, there's kits online where you can get this, the rubber, and this at the same time if you want to replace both. Mine, it spins and it sounds really quiet. It doesn't, it, I have like no play. It's really good. So I didn't, I didn't waste the extra money to replace that. I think it was only like 15 bucks extra. You know, if you want to replace that, it doesn't look too difficult it looks like you can just slip it off back here but i didn't need to mess with it so i'm not going to and also this is a good time where you can shake you can grab this and uh, obviously up closer you can see if your rear differential is really really loose mine seems really tight you you want a tiny bit of play obviously but i'm actually debating on just flushing that while i'm at it too because it's never been done on here so i'm gonna put these on and then I come back so I'm getting these on slowly but surely uh, you can see it's how it's shaped it, it basically has sections I looked I, I didn't know if you know some by some chance this one should have been on the top part of this groove or you know or on the bottom and uh, looking it over it doesn't matter I did put it the exact same way I took it off you know because I don't know if there's some kind of logic behind it I really doubt it but uh, I'm getting these on it's a lot easier this time um, I I didn't get a torque spec I couldn't find one but it's got this really big thick steel insert so I'm just assuming if I get it to basically as tight as I can get it without breaking anything that it's got to be tight enough I'm not too worried because of that color I did put these on these are a lot stiffer, a lot better, pretty self-explanatory. It has a little lip where that part goes to stop, and then I just, you know, hand hand tighten these. They were pretty easy to get off with by hand, so um, I sprayed. I had some super lube I sprayed in there and uh, in there just to lube up the pieces on the bottom a little bit, and got this this piece in and uh, I'll just put the protective shield on get the rest of these bolts in get the bottom on and I might run it without the exhaust as of right now just to see how it feels we'll see head and drained my transmission refilled that up I also did my rear differential since it's up here anyways I thought might as well now I just need to add the bottom part and the exhaust back in I'm gonna do that on camera I'm also didn't show the transmission and differential fill and drain because there's a million YouTube videos about that already so now I'm just going to put my new gaskets on that I got online and uh, they're 22 foot pounds and if I were you, I'd put some anti-seize on the bolts and also on the threads before you go ahead and put them on. But other than that, it's pretty self-explanatory. After I get everything done, I'm going to test drive it and see if I can feel the difference. Well, I got this put on. A little tip. What I did was I got my floor jack, which is right there, and I put it right here on the exhaust. You know, it can be anywhere. Lifted it up, got those pretty close to lined up got the gasket on everything and then I have this box that's about the same height that I put under where the jack is at right now just to rest on it to get it a normal height and then I just slowly would creep the jack up while it was sitting right here and enough so those bolts could finally get aligned it was a little tricky but it's a lot easier when the back is pretty level so I did that, jacked it up, got those on with the gasket, obviously, and he sees the bolts on just, you know, on enough where it won't fall off, but they're not all the way tight yet. Again, those are 22 foot-pounds, and then, um, so then I 
kicked the box out of the way, lifted the jack up, and now I'm doing the rubber mounts right now. But that's just a little tip, makes it a lot easier, especially if you only have one jack. I'm driving around and that definitely feels so much better. Before I would shift, it would be pretty jerky when I let the clutch out. I could feel a kind of spring action and now when I shift I can tell it's extremely stiff and firm so that rubber definitely was the cause of my problem I feel my shifts feel so much smoother and beautiful now this is definitely an amazing upgrade especially for just 20 bucks and you know about a half day's worth of work trying to figure out how to take off everything but I would definitely recommend this if you are having troubles like this.